Hello, this is Tony Riggs with Go Engineer. In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple different techniques we can use uh, for parts that are larger than our build volume, and we still want to go ahead and print them on our 3D printer. Now, there's another video that covers what we can do inside the Insight software, but here's some ideas for joints that we might be able to put in uh, in our actual CAD package. What we've got here is a, a couple examples this is an example of just a, a, a simple butt joint. You know, these work, you know, sometimes. It just kind of depends on the geometry, but it doesn't give us a, a whole lot of strength as we go along. It will work, but may need some extra glue here and there. So let's take a look at a couple other uh, types of joints that we might want to do. An overlap joint will allow us to go in and get quite a bit more surface area for gluing. And what we've also done is put in a couple chamfers here and there uh, to, to make the parts maybe fit together a little bit better. So there's a, an overlapping joint. Uh, we've got another type of joint, maybe a, a double overlap. This is a more of a pin insert into the part and this rib runs full length through the entire part. We've got another uh, do double overlapping joint. This time what I've done is I've just gone in and kind of encapsulated the joint uh, inside of the part. That way we've got nice seams on the outside of the joint and we're going to put the parts together. Here's a couple of other examples that we can look at. I've got a, a puzzle joint. This is a nice strong joint for our part and it keeps it from sliding um, left and right. It still can move up and down if we have enough slack, slop in our part. So here's another example of what we might be able to do with an overlapping puzzle joint. A lot of times people don't want uh, that puzzle joint to be seen on the top side, but on the bottom side we can come in and still have our puzzle joint. So let me come in and hide these bodies one at a time. We've got a male joint there. And then if we come in and hide this other guy show him. We've got just a, a female slot for the parts to fit into. And you're probably going to need a little bit extra clearance there in, in there depending on the geometry to get the parts where they'll slide together. Now th these are all examples of things we can use for nice flat joints. Uh, cylindrical joints uh, are uh, another story. If we come in and take a look at these parts what I've done is I've just got a simple circular extrusion with a square or rectangular keyway. Uh, I've added a little bit of a chamfer to the top edge of the part. But on that, the adjoining part, I've gone in and I've cut that same pocket into the part. But I've done it a little bit differently. If we come in and look at a, a section view through the part, I want to go ahead and make the, the cutout into the part a little bit deeper than the male plug. Uh, we don't want it to bottom out on this top surface. Uh, we want to give it plenty of clearance to, to the top there. Again, another little chamfer to see how it you know, fits in there and, and slides in. Uh, so depending on their geometry, you're going to have a couple different things you can do with a lap joint or a you know, tongue and groove type situation. Uh, but the idea here is just to get kind of creative and think outside the box to, to get your parts where they'll go together. Uh, with this example with the, the, the keyway, it'll keep these cylinders from spinning and they'll, they'll lock in in the correct orientation. We just want to give it plenty of strength and gluing area and, and a nice way where we can split the part up to print it in multiple builds. So this was Tony Riggs with Go Engineer, and I hope you find this information useful. Mm -hmm.